Time to go in depth further on the battle against ISIS, French airstrikes, as mentioned earlier, and to get an update on what is happening militarily, we are pleased once again to call on retired Major General Paul Vallely, who serves as chairman for Stand Up America. General Vallely Skyping in from Big Sky Country in Montana. General, it is always good to have you with us. Uh, Thank you, you, J.D. You have seen Congress now pass the resolution. In your mind, is this the right course of action? Well, let me lay it out this way. You know, I spent three uh, trips uh, over there vetting out the Free Syrian Army, met over 450 of the commanders. They do not need training. They have been trained in the armed forces of Syria. They've been in combat now for almost three years. They need support. They need uh, humanitarian aid support for their families, arms, and with some special forces beside them to help them with air ground operations. So, so let, this, me, uh, let me just get this straight. Ahead. In terms of a timeline, a year-long line, you're saying that the Free Syrian Army, they have people in place, they just need arms, they need aid, and they need some special forces help alongside? That's correct. They're already trained. Most of the Free Syrian Army defected from the uh, Syrian Army. And ever since day one under Colonel Riyadh and Colonel El Maliki, they have uh, fought uh, and the battles and the tactics. Now, I've worked with them on tactics of taking aircraft uh, out on the ground, which they did within 48 hours. And we had stopped international traffic going into Damascus within 30 days. That's the kind of tactical support that they need on the ground. Uh, and eyes and ears they have with good intelligence operations. They control a lot of the crossing points. So uh, we, this is a whole ruse. This does not make sense that they need trained. These are trained fighters. Well, Paul, let's take a listen to what our commander in chief had to say yesterday as he stepped before the microphones, again reiterating that the USA would only be on the ground in a supporting role. Let's listen to President Obama. This is in keeping with a key principle of our strategy. The American forces that have been deployed to Iraq do not and will not have a combat mission. Their mission is to advise and assist our partners on the ground. As I told our troops yesterday, we can join with allies and partners to destroy ISIL without American troops fighting another ground war in the Middle East. Hey, Paul, how do you assist and advise in a combat zone without ending up in combat? Well, it's, it's like in Vietnam when I was an advisor. You know, you're out there with the forces that are fighting every day, so you're in a combat environment. Uh, so it's impossible to be over there where the whole country's really a, in a combat environment, especially up north and over in Syria. But there's ways our special forces and Navy SEALs can work with these people and provide, as Charles McInerney, my good friend and compatriot said, 80% of these targets can be taken out by air power. And uh, so uh, we don't need 100%, but if we can get 70 to 80% targeting and have those uh, targets destroyed, we've uh, gained a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, advanced destruction of the ISIS forces in a very short period of time. But that's what has to be ramped up. We don't seem to have anybody with any sense of how to fight this unconventional war in Washington. That's what's frustrating. And on top of that, Paul, you mentioned our mutual friend, Air Force General Tom McInerney. It seems there is a division between this commander in chief and what his generals may be advising. Now, how is that going to be reconciled? I don't think it's going to be unless the generals and admirals really stand up and shout out because uh, they are basically being shunted uh, again uh, like McNamara did uh, in Vietnam where you have the White House calling out the targets and picking the targets rather than letting it up to your field commanders to do it. So I don't think there's any escape from this incompetency of the national security team to actually let the uh, generals and admirals fight the war and get it done the correct way with minimum casualties, uh, minimum uh, collateral damage. It can be done on the ground. I mean, I've been there. Uh, so, um, but
but we need that kind of a leeway for the generals and admirals to fight the war correctly. So here, here's what it sounds like to me, Paul. You're, you're worried that the politicians and the lawyers are going to set up rules of engagement that ensure our guys are, quote, advisors, and that's going to lead to more confusion. Is that essentially it? Oh, absolutely. And again, this has got to be, a lot of this can be done covertly behind the scenes with the Peshmerga, with the Free Syrian Army. I mean, I could go over to Mar and take them into Hatta province in southern Turkey if I had the uh, approvals, and I could have uh, 400, 450 commanders come in uh, for a conference and launch operations within 48 hours. Uh, so uh, this is all dual, but you have to have the right people uh, and the right uh, uh, staff over there that can implement things and not worry about sending these people back to some other country for training for a year. I mean, it's just ridiculous, J.D. Well, Paul, another of our mutual friends, Colonel Oliver North, uh, has some real problems with what is being proposed. He's dubbing this plan, this strategy, Operation Enduring Confusion. Take a listen. They're talking now about taking 5,000 of the so-called Free Syrian Army, somehow exporting them from Syria, getting them to Saudi Arabia and training them, and sending them back in 8 to 12 months. By then, ISIS will number 45 or 50,000. 5,000 troops to fight a two-front war against Assad and against ISIS. It's not something that can be done. I'm waiting for the general or admiral who will stand up on his hind feet and say, this is mission impossible. Ollie North says it's mission impossible. Your reaction to uh, Ollie's assessment? Well, Ollie's absolutely right. And Ollie and I have discussed this over the last two years uh, quite extensively at some of the meetings that uh, we have uh, uh, attended together. But again, when you get over there on the ground, uh, these people, uh, the Free Syrian Army commander, there's like a, a round table of 10 generals that advise Colonel Riyadh and Colonel al-Maliki in running the Free Syrian Army. And when I was over there the first time two years ago, their numbers were like 60 to 80,000 in the Free Syrian Army. And they weren't only soldiers, there were doctors, there were uh, judicial types, there were educators. So a lot of the uh, defectors that left Assad came from many backgrounds. Uh, so that's why the, calling them rebel forces is, is not the correct term. These are freedom fighters fighting for a free Syria and a secular Syria. About two minutes left, Paul, a little under two minutes. Uh, we have word a 40 nation coalition is being built. Of course, France launching airstrikes against ISIS. That has to be regarded as an important first step in terms of this international coalition. What's going to happen with the other Arab nations in the region? I don't know, but uh, Turkey's such a big violator of supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, Erdogan. Uh, and uh, they need to be taken to task uh, for the support that they're giving uh, the radicals. But uh, I would like to see Jordan do some more. I'd like to see Saudi Arabia do more. Uh, Egypt's trying to hold its own down there itself by protecting the uh, Suez and Libya and Sudan from the south where there's a lot of turmoil. So the Egyptians are very busy protecting uh, that uh, area of uh, interest down there. So you've got to have these other Arab countries uh, stand up and do something. Well, and speaking of excited. standing up and doing something, Paul, less than a minute, got to get your reaction to this. Vladimir Putin speaks out yesterday claiming he can invade five NATO capitals in two days. What on earth did he pipe up for? Paul, you got about 30 seconds. Well, he's uh, again telling uh, the West uh, he can basically do what he wants to and he's got the capability to do it because they are continuing to increase their armed forces capability like China is as we degrade uh, our military. So it's very apparent what the chessboard look like, looks like out there when you have the superpowers doing what they're doing. Paul Vallely, as always, we appreciate your insights and analysis. Thanks very much for shedding some light on this thorny issue. When we come back, our daily intelligence briefing, courtesy of Pete Hoekstra. Stay with us on America's Forum.